Hello, everyone. I'm very happy. How are you, Chris? How are you from Los Angeles, Chris? I'm doing great, Nico. So great to see yeah, you. Yeah, I'm. I'm very happy. I'm. I'm a little stressed because you know, um, we're gonna chat uh, during this um, conversation, talking about who you are, what you have done uh, in the in the industry. But you know, you you you're also a friend. You're the first person that I met um, in Los Angeles. You know, like was probably like seven uh -huh. years ago or something. So that, that that's gonna bring me a lot of memories, Chris. I didn't know I was the first person you met out here. That's amazing. <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. You know, I, I didn't tell you that. You know, the, to to not bring too much pressure. Uh, but yeah, you you were the first person that I met uh, from a professional level. Yeah. And um, you you were so you know amazing, wonderful. You you bring me a lot of advice on the table, um, and you you bring also a great opportunity of of meeting people uh in the business so i will always be grateful for, for oh, that. fantastic <laughs> thank you yeah um you know for, for the audience who is going to watch and listen this video um i would like you to introduce yourself for you know very briefly about who you are and what are you doing in the video game business I am Chris Zimmerman Salter. I have been a voice director, casting director, and performance capture director for years. Um, <laughs> I started um, uh, basically at Hanna Barbera. Um, was my first job directing, and uh, my first video game I ever did on my own was the Metal Gear Solid series, which. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's not a bad entry point to the business. <laughs> yeah, but, but, which is bring a lot of pressure, I guess, at that time. When, when was that? It was uh, 1995 or something? 94, 95, but we, no one knew what it was in, in yeah. the United States. It was a small non-union project. And um, it ended up being a huge friggin' big deal. As yeah. we all know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, in some way it stuck with you during all this year, but uh, you know, we'll get back to it later mm -hmm. on uh, on the conversation. Um, there is a something that I want to to share to give um, details and advice for, for, for the audience is what is your study background? What what did you learn at school? Is that related to video games? Yes, How? yes no. okay. Amazing. Not for video games, but it is related to what I do in video games. Okay. Um, I started out as a music major uh, at university, and uh, there was a scholarship situation that has nothing to do with this conversation um, where I wasn't going to be able to go to school there anymore because I was going to deny my scholarship. And the theater department welcomed me with open arms. So I changed majors and became a, a theater major. And I studied acting. We had a directing class, a uh, stage directing class, um, but it was very, very focused on acting and, um, you know, all of the other things that you study in university, but that's what I fell in love with. And I thought I wanted to be an actress, um, and after school was over with, um, we had a, 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 a magazine basically that posted yeah. castings and, and people could go in for casting calls and things like that. And I went in for a Pizza Hut commercial and out of 250 people, I was one of the four people chosen to be in the commercial. So that was great. I mean, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm just fresh yeah. out of college and I got a job right away. And how exciting is that? And um, I get to the job and I'm looking around the room and there's all these people that are so busy and interested in what they're doing. And I'm sitting at a table waiting to take another bite of pizza. <laughs> and all I did that day was sit there and go, you know, take the bite of pizza and all the other people were busy. And I, I decided that I didn't want to do the acting part. I wanted to do something other than that, something behind the scenes. And that's the day that I decided to try to find a way into the industry that wasn't um, acting. 
So, so at that time, you, you were not thinking about video games. I guess it was more on um, about the the movie industry or the animation industry. Am I right? It was about the industry. It, I didn't have a pinpoint. Um, when I was in college, I also got an internship uh, at the Amundsen Theater in downtown LA in the publicity department, and I just wanted to be part of the industry. I wasn't sure where I was going to fit in. And when I graduated, they could only afford to keep me part-time and I needed a full-time job. So like any very young college graduate would do, I went into my boss every day and said, hey, you should introduce me to this guy who works at a big agency in Los Angeles. And he didn't know a lot of the people I was talking about. And one day I walked in and I said, What about Gordon Hunt? He came and talked at my class. He was really great. What about Gordon Hunt? And my boss happened to know Gordon Hunt. And this is a, a little bit of a matter of luck. Bob called Gordon and said that he had uh, someone who was potentially, you know, a good employee and um, really was a hard worker, et cetera, et cetera. And Gordon said, well, can she come over now? We're holding interviews today. Gordon was the director at Hanna-Barbera Studios and I went to Hanna-Barbera that afternoon and uh, an entry-level position, a typist, and literally what they wanted to know the most was how fast could I type. And I was a very fast typist and this is before computers. Um, uh, I typed 124 words a minute and that got me in the door. That got me in the door at Hanna-Barbera. And I ended up typing Smurf scripts and just massive quantities of scripts uh, at the very beginning. And eventually, at, at the time, animation was seasonal. So again, it wasn't a full, full-time job because they would lay you off every year. And I took other jobs in the industry in between things, still not really knowing what I wanted. Um, but I just loved Hanna-Barbera and I loved the group of people I worked with and the actors that I was working with at the time. And um, eventually uh, I took another job at NBC Studios uh, in the publicity department. And eventually the casting director and talent coordinator at Hanna-Barbera left and Gordon called me to fill one of those positions again. So I became the talent coordinator And then it just kind of was happenstance over the beginning of my career that whenever I felt the need to move on to something with more growth, yeah. the person in the position above me left. So talent coordinator, eventually I became the casting director. And the very first time I directed anything was a show called uh, Capital Critters and Gordon was the director and I was the casting director on it. And it was starring Neil Patrick Harris and Gordon had been gone most of the day. It was just he and I in the department. And he called me at about four o'clock in the afternoon and said, I have pneumonia, you'll be fine. Okay. And that was the first time I directed. Um, wow. That was interesting to me because I was terrified. Um, yeah, my job, Gordon's job. I didn't want, you know, I didn't ask to do that job. I was happy where I was. And the next day uh, we had the cast in there and there were some pretty heavy hitters. I believe Ed Asner was there. I know Neil Patrick Harris was there. Um, Charlie Adler was one of our regulars. And um, uh, I was shaking and I had the storyboard in front of me and I was like, okay, let's go from line one to 46. This is the setup. Take one. And they did it. And I listened and I was like, oh, well, that could be better. And, oh, he's got to do that there and et cetera, et cetera. And so then I conveyed all this to the cast members also still very nervous. And then they did it. They oh, did it back to me what I asked them to do. And I was like, this is fun. And that's when I knew that that's what I wanted to pursue. 
Thanks, Chris. That, that's, um, that shows something that most of the times you, you need to get into the job um, to know what you want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Studies are most of the time I are an ideas that's a desire that, that you had probably since you're, you're a young woman or a young man. But when you get into the job, you realize if you like it or not. And for you, it looks like that it fits you perfectly. You know what I mean? Um, since how many years did you work in, as a casting director um, from now, you know, when did you start it from now? Before, um, well, my period at Hanna-Barbera, including the typist position was about yeah. 14 years. Yeah. Um, I don't want to date myself too much, but as we discussed, Metal Gear was my first game my first big game I directed. So I've been in the industry um, since before, um, the, probably the late 80s. I think it's, it, 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 you, you had felt like a really big pressure um, when you realize what you know, Metal Gear um, has become. Um, because as you said, you know, when it started to be your first gig, uh, you didn't know what it was. No, so can, can you, explain to the audience how it is working. So some people from Japan, um, you know, send some requests to Los Angeles. How is that working? You know, it's it, for the audience to understand what is the process, the usual process. Oh, not, not necessarily Metal Gear, but just yeah. in general. Well, I, yeah. I kind of have to include Metal Gear because um, knock on wood, I have never pursued finding a job. The jobs have found me over the years. Um, Metal Gear helped open that door big time. Yeah. Um, normally, a, a company will contact me or, or find a way to contact me. I don't have an agent. I work all on my own. And they'll ask, you know, they'll say, this is the type of project we have. That's uh, maybe why... Uh, how this is probably how I, I was able to meet you in person because you didn't have any agent, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, would, I don't yeah. want one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want one. But but, but you know, just a, a client will call. Sometimes they'll ask for a meeting or an interview. Um, they'll explain their project to me. We meet each other, see if um, it's a good match. Sometimes it isn't. Um, there has been situations where after I've heard about the project and the scope of work either it's not something i'm interested in or the scope of work is too big that would prevent me from servicing my other clients mm -hmm. so i have to find that balance there but that's the, 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 yeah you 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 have you are lucky enough to be able to choose the, the right feet for you and uh, you know when we met i i felt like you you need to be to be involved. You, you, you need to have uh, some probably specific interest into the subject, something that you love, something that, you know, brings you in that direction. You know what I mean? There is, you know. Yeah, it's not all like that. I mean, I've done mm -hmm. projects that I needed a job, yeah. um, but I, I've got to say that for the most part, I've been very, very luck lucky to have been asked to do some really amazing, amazing things over the years, yeah. you know. When, when we met seven years ago around, you know, um, you know we, we, we were talking about the game that I was working on, you know, Seasons of Heaven, and we were talking about cast, we were talking about performance. And I remember having this conversation about the, the motion capture for dogs and uh, I was so, yeah, I, 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 I mean, so, yeah, I was so amazed, you know, because in the game we wanted to have, you know, Annie who had, you know, great animation and uh, you, you told me that that was totally possible, but what, what is your um, daily routine as a voice performance, as a casting director, um, what, what is your daily routine um, when you are on the set? Oh, well, okay. it depends on what set it is. Um, okay. Okay. I work in studios as well, you know, voiceover studios, which um, basically the script will be prepared ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I do my best to uh, have the time to 
read the script ahead of time. Sometimes if, if it's in-game stuff and I'm working on a performance stage, the performance stage script will take priority. Yeah. But you read the script the night before, uh, you show up, the actor shows up. Um, we have writers in the room with me. Uh, we have the sound team and it's, it's collaborative, but I'm the leader for the actor. Um, cause it's not my game, you know, yeah. it is, it's, it's someone else's game, but I am the driving force for the performances and, and the actor and I work together. If uh, other people have input, it's welcome. I'm not somebody that's going to say, you know, no, you know, it's your game. Yeah. So I try to please the client as best as I can, but that doesn't mean I always agree with them and I'll tell them why I don't sometimes. Um, and you know, we usually perform in a voiceover stage. The average is probably 200 lines, maybe 180, 200 lines in a four hour session. Uh, voiceover is different than television animation in that television animation, a lot of times you have the full cast yeah. in the room. You have a half hour show, you have four hours to get the half hour show and there's more banter. And that to me, you get a better performance, but because video games, especially now have so much content, such that's incredible huge. amounts of content it's cost prohibitive so my job in that situation is to make sure that the conversation is happening and people aren't just reading their lines um i have to remember how uh snake did his lines when naomi comes in and acts with him occasionally a game will let us have the lead performer with um other characters just so that natural conversation will happen performance capture stage is a different story um performance capture stage we arrive early in the morning usually around eight in the morning the actors are getting into their suits there's usually meetings between myself the animation uh, director the cinematic director the creative director and the writers and that is even a more collaborative team where I'm, I'm not the only director, I am supporting the animation. So the cinematic lead is, and the creative lead, it's their vision. So my job is to be there to support and help the actors find that vision. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very challenging process um, because you have so much talent at the same time in the same space. Um, they, you know, you, you have to coordinate all the, their visions in one direction and try to fit what the, um, the director or the uh, lead cinematic or the creative wants to to you know, to, to to share was was their game. So I, I think it, it it should be very 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 challenging. But it, it, um, it's also very uh, collaborative. Yeah, yeah. I guess you know, as you said, there there is um, you know sometimes people have bring ideas on the tables, and um, you know you you figure out how that that might work. Um, it, it's it's not like all on paper, you, you know. Um, exactly. Yeah, you know, I, I don't have at all your experience. I used to work in TV and we, we kind of have the same situation, but your situation was so much bigger because video games now are, the, the scale of them are huge. 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 You know, huge. <laughs> you know you, you, I, I'm not going to ask you on what you're working right now, but. I couldn't uh, you know, if you did. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that. But, you know, you, you, you work on so many big games in the past and the side of them keep growing and growing and growing maybe can you share some what, what was your most um you know um incredible experience you had on a few games you know you, you didn't mention the games that you were working on expect except metal gear can you share some of the stuff uh, past, but, my, I, I mean, uh, a recent project well it came out a, a few years ago was the spider-man yeah. game and the Spider-Man Miles Morales game, which have both been out yeah. for a while now. Yeah. Those games were incredible to be a part of. We had such good teams on both of them. 
Um, like I said, the collaborative process was amazing on both of them. Um, the amount of content was insane, uh, yeah, especially on the Spider-Man Spider game. Because yeah. Spider-Man um, was a full game where the Miles Morales game was uh, started out to be a smaller game. It grew uh, in size and uh, the content increased over the time that we were working on it. But um, the Spider-Man game was very, very special to me very special yeah. uh, all the actors were just perfectly cast uh yeah. that was a collaborative process as well i was not the casting director on that i was the director and did the performance capture as far as the actor's performance went uh not the cinematic performance how the, long for yeah. when you start um jumping into the development um how long did you need let's 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 talk about the spider-man um I guess that a lot of people in the audience know the game and know the size of it. How long did, did how long do you need to to make it happen? How long I come in late in the game. I okay. come in very late in the game. Um, yeah. The oh gosh, um, they're already ready to go when I show up. So as far as the okay. de development went on that, I don't know how long it took them, but it was probably well over a year, maybe even two. And even then during the time we worked on it, it was still being molded and formed and creatively grew during the at least two years that I was involved in that project. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very that's that's big. That's yeah, the, the game. You know, you know, it, it can scare, I guess, a little bit when you see the side of it. Um, <clears throat> when, when we were talking about the game that I wanted it to 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 do, it was so smaller. Um, you know that, that you know now they're so big. That, that's a very big difference um, in terms of involve. To involvement in the project, mm -hmm. the time you spend on it, the time you spend with the cast, the time you spend with the director and all the stuff. Um, um, on all these 14 years of experience, um, I guess you had some also very challenging time with actors, you know, um, actors are big talent. Um, yes. they, they, they could be sometimes very challenging. Um, they, they have their vision, they need to fit inside the project. Can you share some words? I remember when we went, it was around the time of Metal Gear, uh, the, the Phantom Pain or something. So there, there is some element that you can share with your experience, how you work daily with such a big actor. Uh, depending on who they are, um, yeah. a lot of, I, I speak actor, Yeah. Um, I, I talk to them on terms that they understand. I don't talk to them in animation terms. And okay. that's, it's incredible how many fairly famous actors really take to my direction. Um, but there have been a few over the years where they just either don't hear it or don't want to hear it. And when you think about the difference between being a movie star on a yeah. big feature film set and voiceover, I'm asking them to do their job probably a hundred times faster than they do it yeah. on a film set. So there's going to be some friction there. Sure. I, I um, guess. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be some friction there. Uh, but some of them welcome that. And some of them welcome the game of, of really bantering quickly. And some of them, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I don't want to mention names just because no, I don't no, sure, 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 sure. No But I it. was doing a God of War session yeah. and we had hired a celebrity to play a character that he played in a feature film. Okay. Piece of cake, right? Piece yeah. of cake. Absolutely, piece of cake. Looking forward to it. Super yeah. nice guy. Everything's great. He comes in, and his reads are super flat. Just phone, just flat. 
just completely yeah. like phoned in isn't the right word, but they had nothing. They had no life to them. It was like he was reading because he was reading. Okay. He was reading. And I just tried and tried to lift him up and push him out of it. And it got better, but it was still not what we were nearly expecting because in the feature film, he was so damn brilliant. Right. And so at the end of the session, we had some publicity to do and they brought in a camera for the publicity and we did a mock session. And during that mock session, yeah. he would look up, up at the camera and light up and perform the lines. So I thought that was very interesting to watch the difference um, between in that, in that actor, how having that camera on gave him something to focus on and instead of his imagination. To do 200 lines in a four hour session is a talent. And yep. you have to be 100% in the moment of the performance. Um, feature films, they do, what, two, three scenes a day? Maybe 10 pages of a script. And I think 10 yep. pages is probably a lot. Um, Voiceover wise, we do, I don't know, just tons of pages. Yeah, tons of and, pages. And, and it has to go like this because of our budgets, our smaller yeah. budgets. Um, I've worked with some celebrities who just take to it like a fish out of water and absolutely adore the play and the pace of it. So it just depends on the talent. I think I will tell you a funny story and I will mention the, the talent. Uh, I got to direct Charlton Heston once, uh, it was yeah. for an animation show, but, uh, but, uh, it's Charlton Heston. And uh, I uh, uh, go in and he was also playing a character very similar to Ben-Hur. It wasn't the same actor that I'm talking about. Um, so great, Charlton Heston is gonna be so fabulous at this part. And he had about a page and a half of dialogue and he read through it and it was fine, but there was so much more he could give it. And I knew that instinctively if I just had him do it again, he'd fix all that on his own. And I said, okay, Mr. Heston, can we please go from this line to this line one more time? And he looked at me and he looked at his script for about an hour, not really, but it's like it, he looked at the paper and for a long time and he looked back up at me and said, why? And I went, okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I was very new at directing at the time, very new. So, you know, I've been to tell Charlton Heston what to do. Hey. Yeah. So uh, I said, okay, on this line here, I need a little more of um, leadership. Uh, on this line here, now you've gotten up onto your horse so it needs to be projected a little bit more on, um, you know, and it was like a, a mix of physicality and emotion that I was trying to tell him about. And he looked at me and just looked at me and nodded and then looked back at his script. An eternity went by and I'm like, okay, well I'm fired. You know, this eternity that went by and, and finally he put the paper down and said, very well. And he did every single thing I asked him to do. And it was brilliant. Wow. And for years, Nico, I was like, what, what was he doing? Why was he being a jerk? What was he doing? And I finally realized that what he did was the first time I asked him to do it again, he read the script over in his head and he performed it the way he did in his head. And he actually didn't understand why. I wanted him to do it again. And then when I told him what I wanted, he read through it again his way and agreed with me. And that was a real learning experience for myself to have the courage to ask someone like Charlton Heston yeah. to do it differently. So 
That, that, that's great. You know, <clears throat> when you were sharing this um, story, um, I, that reminds me um, some of the conversation that we had um, a few years back. Um, there, there is, you know, w when we met the, the first time, I my head was full of dreams, um, full of expectation. Um, I was writing this novel uh, with all these characters into inside of it, and uh, I, I had very specific idea of of the the actors that I wanted to to get involved in the game, and. Um, I remember this. Start, you remember that. I don't remember who, but I remember. Yeah, you remember who and uh, who we wanted to to cast and this. And you starting to explain me what what was your job, tr trying to explain me that th to try to the, the, to find the right fit to the story. It's not only the face. It's it's how also the actor can understand. The process because as you mentioned the, the video game process is really different from a feature film it's 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 not the same it's it's most challenging uh based on, on the time based uh, on the budget also this is not the same budget um and there is also some actors i i had this conversation with um you know some people that i that, that, that i used to work with at fox and we were working on a big Big project that that didn't happen for Chilfi, but I remember some of the people inside Fox said that you know if we work with this actor, which was a very big actor, mm -hmm. um, he's not going to feel very comfortable with all the the, the motion, um, you know, the the set for the motion capture. Um, did you experience also that that situation with actor who starting with? Um, during the the, the, the performance mocap, um, who feel uncomfortable with that? H how you deal with it? Um, I'm actually trying to think of. They were all pro. Oh. You're, you're lucky, Chris. <laughs> I remember when um, when Kiefer Sutherland came in to voice Snake for uh, Metal Gear Five. Yeah. Um, he, I don't think he was told everything that we needed from him that day uh but we did have to put on and that's when they had a lot of markers on a person's face and we had to put on oh there were so many and they weren't just right now they're just black dots that they put on with eyeliner but these were things that they had to like glue on their face and it was uncomfortable for him at first. And then once he settled in and realized what was happening and what was needed, he was a real team player and a real pro and really good to work with. But the funny part is, is that Kiefer um, would have his cigarette breaks. And the studio we worked at was on um, Hollywood Boulevard uh, near La Brea. And it, Hollywood Walk of Fame is right through there, right through there. And one time we had a, a fire alarm and Kiefer had to go out and had all the markers on his face. And we were standing on Hollywood Boulevard. Not a single soul that was walking by looked up at him at all because they actually thought that they were piercings. <laughs> <laughs> but we figured out he's like no one looks at me i don't know what's going on here <laughs> awesome but now in uh the recent times i think it's also becoming kind of popular yeah. to be in video games um for some of the celebrity talent and uh the marker situation is much less uh now the thing that they have to deal with is the head mounted cameras which i think we did with Kiefer as well um, but, uh, I, I think that being an actor, it's just part of their makeup. Yeah. You know, it becomes part of their makeup. A little weird yeah, at yeah. first. Yeah. 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 You're right. There, they, some of the actors now in, 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 in such, um, um, you know, feature film, they have so many prothesis, uh, makeup. Uh -huh. So they maybe try to do some peril, you know, you know what I mean? Between the two. Um, 
but yeah, I, I think it, it should be challenging because most of the actors probably five to 10 years ago didn't have any idea about how the video game industry could grow. You, you, you know, now it's different. You know, when you see games like um, I, I would think about Death Stranding um, with Kojima-san, um, all these big actors, uh, they, they promote the game so much that now probably all the big actors want to get involved in the game business you know they, they want to try to 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 fit into the, the game probably for for internal challenge or personal challenge or um, i don't know to please their kids I, I i don't know they probably have some difference there um yeah it's it's um it's still difficult our budgets yeah. are so much smaller than yeah. than what they're used to getting paid and if you could talk to the person directly, it might be a different story. But when you're dealing with, uh, uh, you know, big Hollywood agents, yeah. um, that enters a whole nother layer into the process. Yeah. And that's not always easy. That's no, not always I, easy. I, you know, I, I, I've been involved very briefly for, for a year uh, with uh, CAA, which you mm -hmm. know. Um, and um, some of the so was fine, but most of the time it was process, big, yeah. big process. It's a business. Yeah. And, and that's for someone like me that as a foreigner, um, my English is fine, but, um, you know, I'm not fluent. Um, I'm You're fluent, but I'm not um, native. You know, you, I'm not American. So that was very, very challenging. Um, but I, I guess that you are in a situation where now, uh, with all your expertise, um, you can work directly with studios, I guess. Um, you, as you said, you don't need any agent. And uh, I think it's it's wonderful um, for you as uh, voice directors. It's just now starting to be a thing. Most voice directors uh, in the past didn't have agents. You know, for all these years, most of us haven't had agents, and it's a it's a word of mouth industry. Just recently, um, I, I'm hearing uh, and had a conversation with someone who's starting to represent voiceover age uh, voiceover directors, okay. and you know, performance directors. Um, I don't know that I want to go that route. I yeah. like the control that I have over my own time and um, my own wish of how I want to run things for myself, which sounds a little selfish, but um, no, it's, it, you, have it, to, you have to have balance. Find, yeah, find yeah. a balance, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one last question, Chris. Um, you know, um, you, you have worked on so many great games um, with so many talented people uh, around the globe um i've been very very fortunate yeah but you I, I think you deserve it you know um for, for for what i know you we met you know few times many times i guess um also in in, in my place in the studio at the restaurant we spent a lot of time talking yeah. and uh, you were always very generous you yeah. you never um to be honest, you, you never really be, um, I would say, American business uh, mentality. Um, that's something that have surprised me when I, 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 I leave there, uh, because there is always a business opportunity, which is great, but sometimes it could be disturbing. But with you, it was very, you know, honest and it was very generous from from your from your side you, you, you yeah. didn't earn anything with me you know but i was uh, you know i i had so many great memories um of our conversation so so my my last question is was all you've done what is the very last thing that you want to achieve in your career oh gosh <laughs> Sorry for the question. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you look at all your review. Not, not just for myself. This is <laughs> not just for myself, but for all voice directors, all people that are in my category. There are, especially in video games, I don't think there's an award for us. Yeah. You know, and we do so much to help that game 
be what it is with the performances of the actors and you know like BAFTA and all that um I think that that there's and I don't even know how personally to um you know put that out there to the the those teams uh but we're ignored and um I don't really have an ego about it but it'd be nice yeah, that would be nice to be, to be recognizable for, for, for the amazing job that you have done so far. I think the people who's going to watch and listen to the video, they, they, they might understand better the, the connection. is not just you bring an actor on the set and that happened like magic. There is few people around trying to get into the right direction. And some of the time it didn't work. But... Yeah. Uh, on, on such games that you work on, you know, I, I know quite some of them, you know, and uh, you've done an amazing work. And that I, I think is maybe the time that why not and Howard could be could could be nice for for the long career that you had. Or, um, well, or voice directors in general. Yeah, yeah, for, for not all of them. Myself, but in voice directors in general, and I do have Gordon Hunt to thank for teaching me how to do what I do, yeah. you know, because I learned from his, him as an actor director, not just someone that needs to get a hundred lines done in two hours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Chris, I, you know, I want to, 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 to you know, I, I'm starting to get a little more emotional, you know, and um, for, for me, maybe one day we'll fa figure out how we can work together. I would uh, love that Nico. I would absolutely. Show, you, know, and, uh, you know, there, I still have some years, and um, yeah, that that would be an amazing moment, I'm sure. Thank you so much, Chris, and oh, yes. uh, for, Very for, welcome. for for taking your time to to listen to Chris um, about what she's you know she went through uh, all his career, and uh, I hope you you know if you have questions or comments, I will take the time to answer every of your questions. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's very generous. Yeah, yeah, that, I, that I is really very generous. Everybody yeah, is very generous. Yeah. Thank you again, Chris. You're Take welcome. Care. Take care. You Thank guys. you so Thank much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.